Safety management is all about preventing accidents and keeping people and property safe. To do this, we need to understand our risks. We need to understand what could go wrong, and if it does, how bad will it be, and how likely is it to occur. Our risk assessment should help us identify our most significant risks. If we understand our most significant risks, it helps us prioritise these because we need to recognise that any organisation has limited resources. We then need to decide whether to accept them or take further action to reduce the risk to an acceptable level. This is where we put in place risk mitigations or risk controls or consider them to be barriers and defences. For the most part, the barriers and defences we put in place are there to try and reduce the likelihood of an event occurring. It is much harder to reduce the severity because these tend to be when we apply additional safety devices such as safety belts. Whatever action is taken to control the risk, we need to make sure that it is working and effective. We can monitor how many events we've had after we put that risk control in place, and we could use a safety performance monitoring process to do this. Without the right organisational culture, and we often call this a positive safety culture, the SMS is unlikely to be effective. This is heavily influenced by the accountable manager and the senior management team, so they have a responsibility in promoting a positive safety culture throughout the organisation. But let's not forget, the safety culture is also influenced by individuals and groups within the organisation. Therefore, we need to recognise that the safety culture will vary widely across an organisation. Communication is such a key part of the SMS and it has to be two-way. Now that communication has to exist between individuals in the same organisation, but we also need to recognise that communication goes between individuals in different organisations between management and supervisors, supervisors and their staff, and in some cases it has to be between organisations and the regulator. It is our frontline workers who are the eyes and ears of our organisation. They're the ones who are faced with hazards and risks on a daily basis and are the best people to identify safety issues. If they report it, then it can be fixed. This way we can improve safety across the organisation. We need to establish a just culture so that people feel comfortable in reporting these safety issues. This means that they know that when they report something, they're not going to be punished or have any negative action taken against them. We might even choose to share safety information with other organisations so that we can learn from each other. Any aviation accident is our aviation accident, so anything we can do to help each other has got to be a good thing. We also need to recognise you cannot manage safety in isolation for the rest of the business. Safety is just one of those competing priorities for the organisation. Ultimately, we know that organisations are in place to make a profit, and to do that, they need to do that in a safe way. So one of the dilemmas for the account manager is how much resource and cost to devote to safety. Having SMS as an integrated part of the business will help them understand the, those competing priorities. SMS provides a means to have safety as a core business function. In doing so, it will give you better information so that you can make the right decisions both for safety and for your business. We have to accept there's always going to be some risk in all aviation activities. It is complex, it is full of individuals and organisations, all with competing priorities and all with varying performance. When we add in environmental challenges of hostile weather conditions and congested airspace, this just increases that complexity and that variability. SMS is not just about preventing accidents. Having safety at the heart of your business can also provide you with cost savings. How many events have you had that have resulted in costly delays, reworks or even reputational damage, that can impact the business. So SMS is not necessarily about putting safety first, but about doing business safely. There is always a cost in implementing SMS, but for most aviation organisations it's mandatory anyway. So if you have got to do it, you might as well do it well. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. We also need to recognise that SMS isn't something that's going to happen overnight. SMS takes time to establish, time to mature and time to become effective. And finally, my key point for anybody who's implementing SMS who wants to improve their SMS is keep it simple. It doesn't have to be complex to be effective. Use colour, such as the traffic light system where you use red, amber, green so that it can highlight what is most significant and what is most important to the organisation. Own it. It's got to be yours. You've got to adapt it so that it reflects your organisation, your operations and your activity. And lastly, you've got to recognise it's a long journey. You've got to take tiny steps. If you want to get to the top of Everest, you've got to take it taking small steps.